Hi, I'm Anna Conley, Senior Class President and Yearbook Editor. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript talks to members of the Northampton High's new musical theater club about the upcoming show, sits down with the baseball team, and gives you an inside look into drag culture. On Monday, FBI agents raided the hotel room, home, and office of President Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen. Cohen is reportedly under investigation for bank fraud, wire fraud, and campaign finance violations. The warrant was issued under instruction from Special Counsel Robert Mueller. In response to the raid, President Trump suggested that he might fire Robert Mueller. This week, opposition activists and rescue groups in Syria reported that government aircrafts dropped bombs filled with toxic chemicals on the rebel stronghold of Douma, killing 70 and affecting over 500. President Bashar al-Assad's government has denied any chemical attack, and their ally, Russia, blocked a U.S. proposal to investigate claims of a chemical attack at a U.N. Security Council meeting on Tuesday. As of Wednesday, the Trump administration said that they had not finalized their plans for a course of action in Syria, although President Trump tweeted that missiles would be coming. On Wednesday, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan announced that he would not seek another term in the House of Representatives. Ryan's Wisconsin House seat was up for re-election this year. Ryan entered Congress in 1999 and became Speaker of the House in 2015 after Republican John Boehner left the position. It remains to be seen whether or not Ryan will continue as Speaker for the remainder of the term or if House Republicans will choose a new Speaker. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. On Wednesday, the 2018 NHL playoffs began. Sidney Crosby scored a hat-trick for the Penguins and the Vegas Golden Knights in their inaugural season remained undefeated in the postseason. Cool. In other news... In the fall of this year, I reported on the postponement and cancellation of the Northampton High School musical. It seemed as though for those who enjoy musical theater, hope was lost. But recently, a group of students began the process of rebooting a musical theater club with the purpose of reviving the musical theater process at NHS. I also got to talk to members of the club to discuss what it's like to be part of this new organization. The goal of starting this club was for people who like musical theater to still be able to do it because there was not a musical this year. I really love musical theater and I haven't done a lot of it, so I wanted to get, I wanted to do more of it. And I also just like, if I'm not part of a show, then I am sad and don't, like, I just don't have anything to do, so now I'm part of a show. Yay! The current project is a musical collection in collaboration with Natural Shocks. I had the opportunity to meet with musical director Jenny Gehrig to learn more about the show. This show, it deals with some topics that are really relevant right now, like gun violence mainly. It also deals with like the link between that, the link between gun violence and domestic abuse, which a lot of people don't think about. It's in two parts. The first part is a reading of the play, and in the second half we're going to do a musicale of songs that the students have picked to represent hope and change and activism. I decided I wanted to leap into the program knowing that they lost their musical. I thought that I could bring my talents to the school. I think it's important especially in the wake of Parkland and knowing the kids leading the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas movement are theater kids to embrace the young theater minds in our own community and let them know there is a larger group waiting for them and supporting their efforts to fix all the problems we find ourselves with now. Be sure to check out Natural Shocks next Friday, April 20th at NHS. Thanks for watching. I'm Mikey Diaz and I'll see you next week on The Transcript. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? The weather delayed the start of play for the boys' baseball season and had pushed back the date of their first game until earlier this week. Despite the loss on Monday, the team anticipates another successful season due to the return of several previous varsity players and talented underclassmen who are ready to step up to the plate. 
Although baseball does not require much running, the physical strain players endure can take a toll on the players' bodies and mind. To get a better understanding of what the physical aspects of pitching and catching are and the chemistry between the two, I talked to juniors Ethan Salem and Noah Brink. It's pretty hard to avoid injury in pitching. Really the only way that you can truly avoid it is just by not pitching at all. Pretty much every time after I throw, I'll stretch out, go for a jog, and ice it for a couple hours after. When, when I'm catching and I'm squatting for like a varsity level pitcher, <laughs> um, like at first it's a little nerve wracking because they're throwing hard, harder than many other kids that I've caught for. Honestly, I've kind of just gotten used to it. At, like, at first I was kind of afraid I was going to take one to the face or something. I think for the most part, pitchers and catchers always have a very good dynamic with each other because you just always have to be on the same level of thought with each other throughout the whole game or else it's just not really going to work too cohesively. We usually talk about what he wants to throw that day, about what he's feeling, uh, good throwing, and uh, just over time, just like having that same conversation has helped build our chemistry. Overall, we'll do a lot of mound visits during the game. If I get a little bit in my own head too much and start throwing some balls, he'll call time and come out to the mound and talk to me. And I think just having those conversations really brings you closer together because it's a intense time for both of you. All eyes are on you. The snowy weather and rocky start has the baseball team a little down. So to cheer them up, I decided to tell them some incredibly corny baseball jokes. But this is how it went. Does it take longer to run from first base to second base or second base to third base? Third base to home. It's the same. Second to third because there's a short stop in the middle. Okay, what, what do baseball players put their food on? Home plate. Yeah! <laughs> Why don't baseball players join the union? Because they want to be. <laughs> Are you f***ing? <laughs> get out! I'm, 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 no, get no. You just swallow it. Wait. No, 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 don't listen to it. You crack with this at the side like this, and it cracks, right? Yeah. So you, the thing in the middle is the seed. Uh huh. So you take the seed, and you chew it, and you spit the rest out. Do I well, take do it? No, you spit it. Mouth. You spit it out like a baseball player or a softball player. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, the team will perform better than they did in their interviews this week when they face off against Hampshire Regional tomorrow at 2 p.m. Girls tennis have a game today at 4 p.m. against Holyoke. Softball is away at 4 p.m. at Chicopee. Boys tennis is also away at West Springfield at 4 p.m. and girls lacrosse has a game at 4 p.m. in Longmeadow. Boys JV Ultimate has a game at Northfield Mount Hermon tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Odette Venice and welcome back to Hit It or Miss It where all things pop culture are covered. This week, we take a look into the social and cultural implication of drag culture. Originating in 1920 Europe, drag performance has evolved over time in both their popularity and social acceptance, with shows such as RuPaul's Drag Race. While drag culture is a way of individuals to express their pride and confidence, it can also be a target of prejudice and ridicule. Robert Crowley is a local full-time drag queen, and we had the pleasure to meet with him to discuss the influence of the drag community in American media and within the makeup industry, as well as learning the process of getting into drag. Drag is basically, like, there's a couple of different ways you can view it, but it's mostly, like, the idea of you look through Shakespeare, it's, like, dressed as a girl. It's, like, a female illusion. So drag right now mostly is, like, it's performing artistry, it's, it's being in crazy costumes, and like, it's basically like Halloween every day. Drag was very big, you know, with the gay scene developing. It's a little bit of drag queens inspiring others, but also like, Madonna would do a certain crease that looked a lot like Pearl, Leah is on from Drag Race, it's something she does often. It's, it's mostly like the heavy contours, the heavy highlights, the like clownish paint. Like Jackie B is a great drag queen who's very known for her like cut creases. But you're seeing a lot of, like you said on YouTube, you're seeing all these regular girls that love makeup and now they're like looking like drag queens slowly more and more. So that's like, I want to be like Kim Kardashian. It's just funny to see what kind of like insane hell drag has created for the makeup community. <laughs> there's definitely for drag to, drag and makeup, it's, there's been a big combo now. Like there's, there's brands like Sugar Pill Cosmetics who brand mostly to drag queens. So they have this great, um, this great, you know, for the everyday girl or the girl that wants to be very artisty um, and bright colors, but they also like specifically have branding for drag queens because 
we spend a lot of money. <laughs> Does um, Drag Race portray an accurate version of drag? Um, it's reality TV, so everything's going to be insane. Do I really think that all Italian people on Jersey Shore are like that? No. There's the goods and the bads of it, but, but media and putting it out, it's the great thing of it is that now it is. It's so easily accessible. People are learning what drag is. It's becoming less taboo. Stroll down the runway, another payday, cover of magazines. And when they see me, they want to be me. I am a fantasy. The No Hope Pride organization does a lot of work organizing local drag performances. Show your support to these many performances by following and catching up with the next drag performance on the No Hope Pride Facebook. I'm Odette Venice, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And if there are any seniors that are interested in going on the Red Sox trip on April 27th, please bring $50 to me or Jeremy in G16. If there are not enough seniors signed up by the end of the day today, there will be a waiting list for juniors available. Make sure to go to nhstechnology.org to watch the transcripts online extra.